Hello, Tony Burke here again with screencast number eight in our series for construction study students at the University of Westminster to introduce them to Revit 2014. This is another fairly brief screencast in which we are going to add the roof to our model. So if we come out of this screen, go straight into the software. Um, this is where we left off at the end of screencast number seven. If you recall, we had just added in the doors and windows to our model and you'll see that our model is now starting to look like something resembling a, uh, a bungalow. Um, so, as I said, the main element of this screencast is to add in the, uh, the roof to the property, but we're also firstly going to add in the ceiling to the ground floor rooms, and uh, having put the roof on, we're also going to add in a gutter. So we'll move directly into the ground floor level plan, and we'll see if we zoom in um, that adding ceilings is actually very, very simple. Again, we go to the architecture tab on the ribbon at the top. We select ceiling. We can see that um, uh, in the properties palette, um, we've got a fairly uh, standard uh, compound plane ceiling. And as we move into the floor plan itself, you'll see that as I move the mouse around and hover over any of the areas, uh, a red line starts to appear, which indicates the likely boundary of any ceiling within any area. So it's simply a case of uh, clicking in the middle of any of those areas, and straight away a warning comes up telling me that none of the created elements are visible in the floor plan. That's not a problem because uh, all I say, all I really want to do is add in the ceiling. It doesn't actually matter that I can't actually see them on this floor plan. So I'm going to continue selecting the other areas. So we select that one, there, 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 and there. And effectively now we have added in uh, a ceiling to the whole of the ground floor level. If we want to see that, then we simply move to the 3D view. Um, click on that and we can see that the ceiling has been added in so nothing too difficult there so let's go back now to the ground floor plan um, and now we're, we're going to add in the roof now bear in mind that this is um, an architectural model it's not a, a model which would provide us with a set of working drawings but nevertheless um, we are going to add on uh, a roof that uh, is in broad terms correct but as I say it wouldn't really provide us with sufficient detail to actually construct the roof so it is an architectural model so up on the architecture tab we select roof and in the properties palette we can see that we've got a range of options ranging from a flat roof uh, an industrial a roof to an industrial building I'm going to select this option here which is a, a pitched roof uh, with a warm roof construction uh, timber with insulation over Having selected our roof form, um, it's really just a question of um, defining the footprint of the roof. But I also want my roof to have an overhang. I don't want the edge of the roof to be flush with the walls. So if you look at this um, uh, this sort of tab along the, the top of the, um, the, the working screen there, you can see that there is an option there for an overhang. So in that overhang, I'm going to put in 300 millimeters. Uh, so that will tell the software that I want the roof to overhang the wall. And I also want the software to work out the slope of the roof um, most appropriately for the footprint which I define. Having established those parameters, I also need to think about the constraints on the roof. At the moment, the base level of the roof is set at ground floor level. So if I was to indicate the location of the roof at the moment, then the base of my roof would be starting at ground floor level. Clearly, I don't want that. So click in that space there. Um, the drop down menu appears. I select top of wall. Uh, that's really the only um, the only constraint which I need to bother with for the moment. Remember, I can always edit these things at a later date. And now I can actually define the footprint of my roof. So I go into the, uh, the plan of my building and you'll see that as I hover over the first wall, a broken blue line appears on the outside of that wall. And that indicates the 
the extent of the overhang on my roof. So I can click on that wall, I can then carry on round and click on the other walls that uh, I want to define the footprint for. Go around the perimeter of the building. Once I've selected all four walls and I'm confident that I've now defined the footprint, I click on the tick there and the roof should now have been added in. Remember we're looking at a ground floor level plan here so we're not actually going to be able to see the roof in plan but if I now move into the 3D view I can see that sure enough the roof has indeed been added on. So as I say that is a very straightforward way of adding a roof to an architectural model but as I said earlier this is not a set of working drawings at this stage so it, it does just give the shape of the roof um, so it might be appropriate for just uh, indicating the uh, the style of construction without actually providing detailed working drawings. The last thing I really want to do in terms of construction is to add on um, a gutter and I'm going to do this in the 3D model. Again we go up to the architecture tab at the top um, on the the roof button there if we if we click on that down arrow there's some additional options one of which is for a gutter I'm going to select that and adding the gutter is actually very straightforward uh, all I'm going to do is select the the line which represents the top line of that gutter so I'm going to click there um, move the model um, around a little bit select my line Sorry, I've come out of gutter there, so I need to go back into it. Select gutter again. Click there. Move it around a little bit. There. And finally, there. So now if we zoom in on that, we can actually see that we have actually added in a gutter to the roof. I should point out that at this stage, we haven't actually put any downpipes in. So whereas the... Uh, the water would run off that roof and into the gutter there's currently nowhere for it to go but just for the moment I'm going to leave it at that um, there's our, our gutter added to the property so now we've got a fairly complete 3D model um, which includes all the from the foundations the ground floor external walls internal partitions doors and windows ceilings and the roof uh, the last thing that I'm going to do is if I go back into the ground floor level plan I'm just going to add in uh, a section so that we can uh, just see one section through the building in order to do that we go into the view tab on the ribbon at the top um, select section um, click somewhere where we want the the line of our section to run I'm just going to take it across the middle of the building so we click there we drag out a line through to the other side of the building click again, hit enter on the screen, um, on the keyboard rather. Um, if we go into the project browser, a section will now have been added to the project browser. So I click on that little plus button where it says sections in the menu. There's section number one. I double click on that and our section will appear. Um, now there's the level of detail there is not great, but if you recall uh, on this view control bar right down at the bottom of the screen, uh, one of the little uh, icons there is for the, the detail level. It's currently set at coarse, so I change that to fine, and that now shows uh, our section in considerable detail. So we can see, working from the bottom, our foundations, our ground floor construction, our external wall, including both leaves of the cavity visible. Um, we can see our ceiling, we can see our uh, warm roof construction, and we can see the gutters being having been added in. So uh, just, let's just go back briefly into our 3D view to finish off. Um, and that I think is a, a reasonably good uh, 3D model of a simple bungalow. The level of detail isn't great at this stage, but certainly from the point of view of uh, getting us to understand the basics of Revit, I hope that's been helpful in uh, uh, providing you with a starting point to um, explore the potential of Revit in greater detail in future.